great will of well. When God gave uh, the Israelites the manna to eat, like we talked about last week, he also told them, I'm giving you bread in the morning, but tonight I'm going to give you meat to eat. You don't have to go butcher all your cows and sheep and goats. I'm going to give you meat to eat. And the Bible says that a, a wind blew, and it blew quail into the camp, enough that everyone could have all the meat that they wanted to eat. And that's all that section says about the quail. But God will do this again at a later date, and uh, that account has more to it than this one. Evidently, this one simply, everyone had all the meat they wanted, and they were happy. In the morning, they woke up, there was manna on the ground, and they said, what is it? And in, if you are speaking Hebrew, and you say, what is it? It sounds like manna. So they went for 40 years eating, what is it? Um, they traveled a little ways, and they came to a place where there was no water. And their response was, oh, that's okay, because we know God will take care of us like he has up to now, right? No, no, this is Israel. They said, why did you bring us out here in the desert to die of thirst? There's no water here, and, and we're just, we're going to die, and it's just, it's awful. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, remember that because it's going to be repeated a lot. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're probably all kind of like that. We forget all the good things God has done for us in our lives and the times he's protected us and miraculously supplied for us. And we get to worrying and fretting instead of just trusting him that he'll take care of us like he always has. Um, but they, they weren't there yet if they ever got there. Um, and Moses went to God and prayed, and he said, God, these people are fixing to stone me. They're so upset. So God said, take your rod that you held out over uh, the water, and I want you to go, and you see that rock over there? I want you to hit it. That's not the normal way to get water. But he went over to the, the rock, and he did what God told him to. He hit the rock. And when he did, the water came out of the rock. Enough water to take care of the whole kit and caboodle. There would have been a lot of water, <laughs> because there were some three million people. So this is probably more like the people should be like that tall. It was a lot of water. Um, and um, God provided for them in that way. Then they traveled a little further. And when they did, they ran into a group of people called the Amalekites. We believe those may be what uh, other historical documents call the Hyksos. The, there appears to be about the same time period, and they had the same... Uh, lifestyle. Uh, they were nomad shepherds. Uh, but whether they were the same or not, the Amalekites attacked. And though Jewish legend says that Moses was actually an army general before he left Egypt, uh, he did not lead the Israelites into battle. His assistant, Joshua, did. And this is really the first mention of Joshua. Um, Joshua, we don't talk about Joshua as much as we do Moses, but Joshua actually did equal to Moses in, in uh, the things that God had him do. In this case, he is leading Israel in battle. Now, what was Moses doing? Why wasn't he leading him in battle? Moses took his brother Aaron and a man named Hur, H-U-R, up to the top of the mountain, and they were watching the battle. And Moses lifted his hands up. I imagine he was praying. God, help him. Help Israel. And as long as he had his hands up, Israel won. But his hands got to feeling really heavy. I mean, if you, have you ever held your hands up for a long time? And after a while, they get really heavy. So he put his hands down. When he did, the Amalekites won. So, God help them, 
the Israelites started winning. Now the Amalekites win. Now the Israelites win. Now the Amalekites win. So, well, he wanted Israel to win. So Aaron grabbed one of his hands, Hur grabbed the other hand, and Moses sat down on a rock, and Aaron and Hur held his hands up while the battle continued, and with Joshua at the front of them, Israel beat the Amalekites, with Moses being held this whole time. So if you're, you're ever talking um, to someone and they said, well, he really held his hands up while he was uh, leading the church or leading that conference or whatever, that's actually what they're referring to. They're saying that the, the leader had someone who was helping him do what he was called to do. In this case, hold his hands up. Uh, so that's one of our, our sayings you hear in church sometimes. Uh, so the, just the next step in uh, that Israel continued in and God providing for them and taking care of them. There is some speculation that after this battle, the Amalekites somehow heard the Egyptians didn't have an army anymore because they're at the bottom of the Red Sea and that that was the Hyksos invasion that took over Egypt and just ruled them for several hundred years because uh, the Egyptians couldn't fight back because their army is wet. <laughs> Let's sing our song. Beloved. 